Today I'm reviewing the Fifine K688 microphone, and it can be the perfect gift that can provide that high quality audio for your creator or yourself without breaking the bank. The Fifine 688 mic is a dynamic mic with a cardioid polar pattern. Did I say that three times? That just basically means that it picks up the sound from the top while rejecting the sounds from the rear and the sides. You can easily record high quality audio from these kinds of mics for a podcast or even voiceovers. I won't be providing a comparison because it's in a class of its own as a quality yet budget mic, but you'll hear that it holds up very well amongst great narratives. Today, we'll be looking at the features, the user experience, and the performance of this microphone. Full disclosure though, Fifine did send this mic to me to review, but Everything I say in this video is my personal opinion, and they don't need to approve what I say in this video. If I did, I wouldn't review it, and they're seeing this for the first time with you, so let's just get into it. The design of this mic provides that professional studio standard without the addition of the RGB like the AM8 that my wife uses. She royally loves that microphone. The build quality is primarily metal with plastic accents, but it feels quite solid. Now it comes with a detachable pop filter that protects from plosive breath noise and the shock mount that can protect from random rumbles and bumps. And it does a great job of omitting those extra outside interruptive noises. The bottom houses the controls for both volume or gain and headphone volume where it rests next to a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack for monitoring. There's also a USB-C and XLR connection on the bottom and everything seems a bit busy to me. So, you know, trying to just without looking to manipulate all the controls back here can get a little confusing. So I usually have to just turn around and look at it. But, you know, that's that's one of the only cons. There's one caveat to using USB-C over XLR, and that's all of these controls will only work if you connect the mic using the USB-C. Otherwise, all XLR compatibility and controllability will be with whatever processor or recording device you're using. I usually prefer the XLR because I use the Rode Podcaster Duo, but the USB connectivity is it's a bit more convenient while trying to work in a bit faster ecosystem. One of the only cons really to this microphone is that the USB-C and all the controls are at the bottom. My wife's AM8 on the other hand has the controls on the very front of it and it's a lot easier to use. But it doesn't sound as good and it's so marginal that it's really not worth an upgrade because there's only like a $10 difference between that microphone and this one. But having both connections can be the deciding factor for your recording needs because it provides more flexibility than many of its competitors. As I mentioned, my wife uses the Fifine AM8 for her work and also her own personal YouTube videos, so I'm already familiar with the quality that this company can produce. Her mic also has the XLR and USB-C connections, and she absolutely loves that. This mic is staying on my setup, and then this is where we start talking about stands. If you had a bad stand experience, then it's easy to disregard the best qualities of the actual mic, but the retractable stand that came with this kit is your run-of-the-mill, springy, loud, crickety piece of metal, so I asked them for a different stand, and they delivered. They delivered me the BM63, but it still wasn't good enough for me, so I just ordered one for myself, also made by Fifine, the BM88, and I couldn't be happier with it. It was funny, as I was researching these stands, and each one from lowest to highest price was $20, $40 and $60. So that just means that they provided a product for anybody's budget from $20, $40, and $60 on their stands. And even the $60 stand, I mean, that's a really good price for such a nice stand. They even have color choices, so I could hook up my wife with a better and nicer looking stand to match her setup. She has an all white system and, you know, it looks really good on her desk. And now she even feels more professional as she sits on her desk because I tell you, you don't need any distractions when you're trying to be creative. Let's get into the sound quality. First, we'll test the sound quality of the USB-C and then the XLR to find if there are any audible differences between the connections. So this is the Fifine K688 with the USB-C. I've got it turned about halfway up on the gain on the back of the microphone. 
but I've got a lot of room noise. I've got a 3D printer going right now. I've had a print going for about seven hours. And then I have two computers going right now and their fans are going. And having this type of microphone is great because like I said before, you know, you gotta speak directly into it and it blocks out the surrounding in the rear. So win-win. And here we have the XLR going to the Focusrite Solo Scarlet. And uh, it's going straight into my wife's laptop as we did before. We're still using the same software, Audacity, and uh, should be a pretty even kill, good baseline uh, comparison between USB and XLR. So let me know what you think in the comments. For the best results, you must speak directly into the end within two to six inches away from the end of the microphone. Now, if you'd like to hear the quality of the AM8 on my wife's desk, that's the $10 difference microphone roughly, uh, I'll place that video up here for you to check out. But... I really think that the Fifine K688 sounds amazing, especially for the price point. Typically, budget mics have this wider variety of strengths and weaknesses, but this one holds, you know, a bit of a more of a narrow margin. Some things to consider when choosing the right mic is how sensitive it is to your surroundings, also known as noise floor. B-movies are so guilty of this, of not adding ambient noise or room noise to all of their videos, because some people actually do it intentionally. Most movies have it. If you just took out all of the other audio and just left the room noise there, you would be able to hear it through your television or your listening device. Same here. I liked a little bit of room noise to let you know I'm alive, and I don't want to sound like a B-movie where they forgot to put room noise in and everything just does not match up. Ambient room noise is sometimes good when making videos or short stories, but in a narration, yeah, not so much. That background hiss can be so distracting to your viewers or your audience. I have an AC unit, numerous computers, lights with fans and chargers going, so having such a dynamic mic is a must. Some people have complained that they've heard noise and, you know, a hum in their background, but I've not heard any of that in this microphone, and you know, I'm, this is an unedited audio file. That's why I'm doing the entire video with just this microphone, so you can get an idea of what you're working with. What I will do when using the USB-C connection is turn the gain to about halfway and tweak the controls in the editing or recording software. Otherwise, while using the XLR function, just make sure you have some decent braided cables. Good cables can make the world of difference. If you have old, cheap, nasty cables that you got from Amazon, uh, you're likely going to get that hum. But to alleviate any noise or hums or any rattling or whatnot, do yourself a favor and get some nice braided cables. I'll post some down for you to look at down below. So I intentionally recorded this video in its entirety on the Fifine K688 mic. So you would have some real-time perspective of the depth that this mic can provide. The highs, the mids, and the lows balance aside of the noise floor makes this one of my favorite budget mics for my studio. What do you guys think? And do you guys think that the quality stands up to more expensive mics you've heard from other creators? Let me know, I'm very curious. So, in conclusion, I think this is actually a great choice for anyone looking for a flexible, high-quality, dynamic mic on a budget. You do not have to be a new creator or just starting out to enjoy the rich features of this budget microphone. Nowadays, budget microphones remind us how overpriced more renowned or popular brands can get. So, thankfully, they assist with keeping larger companies honest with their pricing strategies or else they'll just lose sales and everybody will just start buying budget microphones. <laughs> Leveling up your audio is probably one of the easiest things you can do to improve the quality of your content. If you're looking for a microphone that can improve the quality of your recordings without breaking the bank, then you might want to give the Fifine K688 a look. Everything, like I said before, everything will be posted down below for you to go do your own research, but you won't be disappointed. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. Since I don't get that many, I'm sure to get back to you pretty quickly. I hope you found this video very helpful. And as I mentioned, I've included the link to this microphone and the stands in the description below. So please use my affiliate links to further research if this is the right microphone for you. Every little bit helps out the channel and keeps me able to provide informative videos for you. If you haven't already considered subscribing and if you don't mind, hit that like button on your way out. I'm still trying to grow the channel and I'd appreciate any traction that I can get. 
Thanks for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Have a great day.